So I was rewatching The Office the other day, and I came across this iconic scene where everyone is waiting to see if this DVD screensaver hits one of the corners. And I thought it might be fun to try and recreate this in SwiftUI. So we'll start with the blank project, and we'll build this animation from the ground up. Here's a preview of what the end product will look like, but let's go ahead and explore some of the starter code. So in this project, all I've done is I've gone ahead and I've added the DVD logo asset, and I've changed the previews orientation to be landscape. So the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out a way of drawing rich and dynamic 2D graphics in SwiftUI. And fortunately, as part of iOS 17, we now have access to the Canvas API that lets us do exactly that. So let's go ahead and replace our body implementation with this. And what it's doing is it's going to give us a context, which is sort of a drawable object we can use. So anytime we want to draw or fill or do kind of any 2D graphic type work, we'll apply sub operation on the context. And then we have the size of the canvas as well. So in this code here, all we're doing is we're setting it to a black background and we're ignoring the safe area. At this point, there's a few other pieces of information that we know. So let's go ahead and paste that in here. We know that at some point, this experience is going to come down to moving the image's position around the screen. So let's go ahead and create a variable to store that information. We also know the size of the image, which we can just grab from the PNG file itself. So we'll create a variable to store that information. And of course, we need to load the image as well. So let's go ahead and just create a variable that preloads the DVD logo image. From here, our next task is to actually draw the image onto this canvas. So to do that, we can simply use the following code. We are drawing the image, we are providing a tint color effectively to it, and we're telling uh, the canvas the location that we want to draw it at. And you can see that it's in the top left corner because currently the initial state of position is zero, zero. And we are also specifying the image size here, so that way the aspect ratio is correct as well. The next thing we want to do is we want to start moving around the image's position. And to have it start at the top left corner doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So let's see if we can find a better initial position for it. What we'll do is we'll create a variable that represents the entire size of the canvas. In this case, the size of the device, really. And then from here, what we'll try and do is we want to align the center of the image to the center of the screen. And we can do that using this simple calculation. You'll notice though that this doesn't seem to work. Even though we are updating position and we've marked it as state and it's being used in this closure, you would think that SwiftUI would pick up on this data change and re-render the view, but that doesn't seem to happen until you specify position in this capture group. And as far as I can tell, this is just some property of how Canvas manages its dependencies but in a typical SwiftUI view, you wouldn't need to do this. And I have more information about this sort of edge case in the blog post linked below. We know that we want to update the position's value over time. My initial approach was just to use a timer that fired every 1 30th of a second, so that way we would have a 30 frames per second refresh rate. But that's not the ideal solution. Instead, we want to use a CA display link. It's a timer object that allows your app to synchronize its drawing to the refresh rate of the display. What this means is that we can have our canvas update at the natural refresh rate of whatever device we're using. We can use this wrapper around display link. So what we're doing here is we're creating a display link and we're creating a completion handler that will fire every time the display refreshes. We'll take that as a parameter for our start function We'll create the display link. We'll tell it what function to trigger. In this case, it's really just triggering the completion handler you passed in. And by specifying this line here, we are tying the display link to the current run loop. And we're saying that every time the screen refreshes, go ahead and trigger this frame function, which in turn triggers our update function. You'll also notice that I specified main actor here, just to ensure that all of these updates happen on the main thread, because ultimately, it's going to trigger UI updates. In order to use our new display link class, we need to first add main actor to our content view to make sure that the context for both the, the content view and the display link are the same from a concurrency standpoint. Now we'll need a property, so we can go ahead and we can create a display link property, which we'll now go ahead and use in our SwiftUI class. It's important that this is a state property, so that way it's retained by the content view 
during the um, subsequent redraws, right? So now let's go ahead and paste the final piece. What this is saying is that eventually whatever code we put here is what's going to be updated in that call to frame here. And whenever the screen disappears, let's go ahead and remove ourselves from the timer. We know that every time this callback is triggered, we want to update the position of our image. But now the question is, how fast should our image position change? And what we can do is we can create a velocity vector. And what this is saying is that for every time step, for every time the screen is redrawn, we want to update the X position by one pixel, the Y position by one pixel. So if you wanted different speeds, you can update these values here. With this velocity vector in place, we can now actually start moving the position of the image. So we can come down here and we can replace it with this code. And what this is saying is that for every step in time, every time the screen is naturally going to refresh, go ahead and increase both the X position and the Y position by one. It's what was specified here as a velocity. With this approach, you'll see that the image does in fact move, but it moves right off screen. So we need to add some code that kind of keeps things in check, that it keeps things within the confines of the screen. So we can just add a few conditional checks. And all this is doing is it's checking for an edge in the horizontal direction, and this is checking for an edge of the vertical direction. And all we need to do is we just need to flip the direction of travel. So if it's the case that it is moving in one direction of the x-axis and it's exceeding an edge, we can just flip that direction of travel. Same, same deal with the vertical direction. If it's exceeding some bounds, we can just flip it so it moves in the opposite direction. And now regardless of whatever edge it hits, it will always just change directions and continue on. So we're nearly there. The only thing we want to do now is we want to change the color of the image every time it hits an edge. So what we can do is we can use this function that just generates a random color and we can change the tint color of the image every time it hits the edge. So the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need some property to store the current color it should be. And now we can specify that when we go to apply a tint color to the image, it should be whatever color we've generated. Cool. So when it restarts again, you'll see that it restarts as green. And the only thing we need to do now is whenever it hits an edge, which we know is the instances where the change in direction happens, we can just assign image color to a random color. And now you can see that every time it hits a screen, it's just going to change the color just like it did in the early 2000s. Now that we have all the functionality in place, let's kind of amp up the speed. So let's go ahead and make this five and five, and we can really see it in action. So every time it hits an edge, changes color, always stays within bounds, and we're pretty much done. So all of this code will be available uh, in the description below. There's also a blog post that has all the source code as well. If you have any questions or ideas for future videos, please let me know. And if you like this video, I hope you consider subscribing. Thanks.